Thank you everyone for joining us on another Silicon Labs product podcast. I'm joined again by Nick Dutton with the Wi-Fi team. Nick, nice to have you. Hey Kyle, good to be back again. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more into the Wi-Fi products with the, the new products we've uh, recently released. Uh, this time I wanted to talk about the WGM 160P. And again, why don't you just, what, what exactly, you know, it was shown in the hurricane board demonstration at the company meeting. Uh, it's also on our website. It's pretty exciting video. But for those that saw that video, what is exactly the excitement behind the 160P? Well, the 160P is, um, it's quite unique because it's quite heavily integrated. So not, not only have we got um, the WF200 in there, which as, as you're aware is our transceiver with the split Mac approach and the RF performance, which, which helps with the battery life aspects, but it's also got our, our giant Gecko 11 core inside. So at a very high level, what this is offering us is both a Wi-Fi and Ethernet solution. Which means it is, um, it, it, it's, it's effectively our first Wi-Fi multi-protocol product. Um, That's good. Yeah, I'm sure the team's excited for that. So, where where do you see these guys um, when we go to customers and customers are looking at the the product? What other products are very similar or closest in the market? Yeah, uh, you talk about competitive sockets. Sure. Yeah, I would I would expect that the the teams out there will will quite often bump into Cypress, they'll bump into Espressif. They're very much uh, in, in our league um, from an application standpoint. So I, they will be the key things. Um, however, with this part, I think we offer some pretty good differentiation. Um, the, the WGM160, it's uh, really an entire application on module. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean. The customer's application can use uh, the LCD, LCD drivers, um, maybe they're going to use LESense, microphones, it's got a, you know, on-the-go USB. Um, we, we, we've also got plenty of flash. Uh, this is a 2 meg device, uh, 512K RAM, so the applications themselves are going to be, um, or can be allowed to be pretty exhaustive. So it's a very capable part meaning really there won't be anything else needed in the customer's application for the most part. Um, so th they could look at this as an entire solution in, in a single module. Okay, uh, what are some of those applications? I mean, just there's, it's a broad opportunity base, but what do you see as maybe some things to you know, identify and then also just to paint a picture of some of the things it's capable of doing? Sure, well, again, because of its capabilities, I think, um, it puts it into the application class, which would be things such as data loggers, where you're wanting to gather a lot of data from the sensors. And, and again, this device, I squared uh, S bus, I squared C bus, plenty of IO, um, plenty of data can be fed in through the peripheral set. So you could make some substantial log files, which may or may not need to be sent to the, the cloud at some point in time, but lots of storage for that. Um, if you're if you're looking also from the RAM perspective, 512 is you know in, compared to some of those guys out there, that is substantial. Uh, you know a lot of the Wi-Fi products that you'll see on the market today, 100, 150k uh, would be your your kind of ballpark range. We're we're far superior in that respect. So data loggers, uh, but this also plays into gateways, so you can be managing other end nodes that are out there. Um, an example of what could be a gateway is a thermostat, right? The thermostat, sure, it appears like a, a single device hanging off your heater units, but uh, you know, in, the, in some of the newer HVAC systems, you've got dampeners, you've got remote sensors, um, you've got, LCD screens that are a little bit more substantial than they, they used to be in the old days when you, you just have the, the turny knob thing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, I think the applications can lend themselves to something of substance. Um, whereas, you know, some of the other products that we're going to be bringing out in the future, maybe a bit more dialed into headless type devices. Okay, true, real, simple end nodes. This is more for something that has 
like you say, a, a, a good hefty application to where you need some of the benefits of the, the MCU and and That's really right. as you listed, I mean it's it's got. Uh, it's got a good list of things to help tackle those problems. That's right. That's right. That, that's not saying it can't address the edge node or those smaller edge nodes, but its capabilities does allow it to participate in those Much bigger wider. applications. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Uh, so a lot of the buzz around Silicon Labs has been our pre-certified devices and the benefit that gives to the customers. This is going to follow along suit. It's absolutely. Gonna, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I don't. Uh, I, uh, at least, and I can speak for the Wi-Fi team. We have no intention of doing modules that aren't certified. So th that is a goal. And why is that a goal? Well, um, time to market is obviously important. If you can get the certification complexities out of the way for our customers, it's good for us. It's good for them. Um, modules are also um, a good idea because they they help customers avoid the complexities of RF design. And both RF design and certification, that process can be quite time consuming, at least for people just entering this market. So our, uh, our direction here is to certify our products, um, certainly all the key certifications, FCC, CE, IC, those kind of things we take care of. Uh, the more corner case ones, it's not that we don't plan to do it. it we, we may not have done them, and if the opportunity presents itself, we, we can certainly do them uh, if needed. Great. Good. And that's going to help all the customers get to market faster. So uh, they, they like the certification, they like the feature sets. What's the best way for them to get started uh, with the WGM 160? Well, the, 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 there are really two ways you can move forward. There is the, the traditional uh, model where we have the radio board that sits on top of the WSTK. Um, this is a fantastic board if people are really wanting to find out where the, the nano amps are going and, <laughs> and, and things like that. Um, so we support that just like the other um, vertical product lines that we have here. But we also have that hurricane board that you mentioned. Um, we, we, we put that together as a, sort of a sensors to cloud reference design, um, which is why when you look at that board, it's just covered in, in sensors of various formats. Most of them are Silicon Lab sensors, so that, that is a reference design that supports other product lines within our company. However, we were, we were taken back by the positive response on that to the extent where we're going to actually productize it. So it's not going to just be a reference design, which is a good sales tool for our sales team, uh, or, or a good software coding platform for our FAs to demonstrate stuff to customers themselves, but we will take it one step further and we will get it productized for the customers as well. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That'll really help them out. All right, well, I, mean, I think we have a couple more topics, but for now, let's uh, stop this one. Again, appreciate uh, you giving us the information on the WGM 160. Uh, there's just so much more we can cover, so I'll have you back and we'll have a few more topics on the Wi-Fi products. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks man. Right. Thanks.